students today we are going to start with a new chapter that is ratio and proportion and the objectives of this chapter are introduction of ratio applications of n method introduction of proportion proportion is possible or not and some applications like how to find value of x how to find third proportion mean proportion fourth proportion and continued proportion so today's video is going to be about the first four objectives of this chapter. So let's get started. So students, first of all, we will talk about the ratio that we have already discussed in the previous classes, right? So uh, ratio means what? Ratio is the relationship between the two same quantities with same units, right? We have already done this in the fifth as well as in sixth standard, right? So we will just quickly recall it. Ratio is the relationship between two same quantities with same units, right? So here I'm taking an example of A and B. So how can we write A and B in ratio? So here we will use this sign, that colon. So it will be A ratio B or we can say that A is to B or we can write it in the fraction. So here I'm taking an example of 2 ratio 3. That means 2 is to 3. Now here 2 will be the first term or it will be called antecedent. Similarly 3 will be the second term or it will be called a consequent. Right? Now here we will take first example. Express in simplest form. Simplest form means what? You know this very well. It means cutting. Simplest form means cutting. Now we are talking about ratios. So we will take the numbers in ratios like 48 ratio 56, right? Now, how can we write this ratio in fraction? So first step will be like this. We will write this ratio in the fraction. Now we are doing or expressing them into the simplest form. That means we have to cut them on one common table. So it can be cut on eight table, eight six are 48 and eight sevens are 56. Now, 6 and 7 can't be cut on one common table, so we can write them as it is, 6 upon 7. And because we are talking about ratio, so we will write here 6 ratio 7. Alright? Now, second is 3 meter ratio 90 centimeter. Alright? So, here we are having ratio like 3 meter ratio 90 centimeter. Now, first of all, we just have read about the definition of ratio. That means ratio is a relationship between two same quantities with same units. Now, you can see that numbers are there, but the units are different. Here, meter is there. Here, centimeter is there. That means we have to make them same. The units will be same. So, we can change this meter into centimeter. As you know that how to change it. 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter. Then 3 meter is equal to 100 into 3. That will be 300 centimeter. So on the place of 3 meter, now you will write here 300 centimeter ratio 90 centimeter. Now what we will do? We have to go to the first step. What was the first step? Because now units are same. So we can start with the sum by writing them in the fraction. All right. So last zero can be cut on three table now we can cut three three is a nine three ten is a thirty now ten and thirty can't be cut so we will write here ten upon three and the answer will be ten ratio three right now move to the second example here first of all we will read the statement if p ratio q is equal to three ratio five and q ratio r is equal to four ratio seven find p ratio q ratio r and p ratio r that means whatever is given to us, we will write here P ratio Q is equal to 3 ratio 5. Q ratio R is equal to 4 ratio 7. Now you can see one thing that one value is repeating. Right? That means one alphabet is repeating. Which alphabet? That is Q. Right? But the value of Q is different in both. So P ratio Q. P's value is 3. Q's value is 5. Now here Q's value is 4. R value is 7. Right? So... We have to find here P ratio Q ratio R and P ratio R. Now, how can we do it? So, we will start our question by writing here P ratio Q. And uh, in the next line, we will write here Q ratio R. Right? Now, how can we solve them? There is a certain method that we will choose for solving this question. That will be called the N method. Right? So, first of all, 
on the place of p you will put the value here ratio q's value that will be 5 and in the next line you will write under q right because of uh, both are same but the values are different so you will write here 5 and under 5 you will write the next value of q will be 4 ratio 7 now we are using your n method so first of all you will put this arrow like this then upward and then from 5 to 7 right now what does it mean it means that we have to multiply them as we are putting the arrows that means these two numbers will be multiplied so first of all we are having three ratios like p ratio q ratio r so you will write here p ratio q ratio r is equals to now first of all this arrow is there that means 3 into 4 so you will write here 3 into 4 ratio next 4 into 5 so 4 multiplied by 5 ratio 5 into 7 so you will write here 5 multiplied by 7 right now we are finding your p ratio q ratio r so 3 4 is a 12 ratio 4 5 is a 20 ratio 5 7 is a 35 all right now one thing students we can cut here that if they there is a uh, cutting is possible then you can do the cutting in three of them not two of them right so if there's something is common so you can cut them otherwise leave it as it is next one is they are uh, asking us for finding p ratio r so what will be p ratio r what is the value of p here 12 so you will write here 12 ratio means ratio what is the value of r from here so you will have 35 now again 12 and 35 can't be cut on one table so the answer will be as it is right so we have solved this question with n method so we will take one more example for better understanding now next statement is there if a ratio b is equal to one whole number one upon three ratio two whole number one upon four and b ratio c is equal to one upon two ratio three whole number one upon two find a ratio c now we have taken one example in which the ratios are given us in whole numbers as well as in the fractions right so now how to solve it first of all we have to make it simple right how can we make it simple so first of all what we will do we have to change them right from mixed to mixed to improper we will change right so three ones are three plus one four so you will have four upon three ratio 4 to the 8 plus 1, 9. So 9 upon 4. Alright. Similarly, we will write here B ratio C 1 upon 2 is there. Ratio 2 into 3 that is 6. 6 plus 1 that is 7. So 7 upon 2. Alright. Now what is the next step? We will have the LCM of these denominators. So 3 and 4. What is the LCM of 3 and 4? That is 12. It is so simple. So we, uh, we don't have any need of calculation here. So the LCM of 3 and 4 will be 12. Now, on 3 table, 12 comes on what? 4. So, 4 4 is a 16. Ratio, on 4 table, 12 comes on 3. So, 3 9 is a 27. Alright. So, here we will have 16 ratio 27 upon 12. Next one is 2. So, uh, LCM of 2 and 2 will be 2 only. So, 2 1 is a 2 and 1 1 2 1. That will be 1. On 2 table, 2 comes on 1. So, 1 into 7. That will be 7. Now what we will do, we will skip this LCM. So we will write the above values. That means the values in the numerator. So A ratio B will be 16 ratio 27 and B ratio C will be 1 ratio 7. Alright. So now we have the simple values of A ratio B as well as the B ratio C. Now we can move further in this question. So now students, again we can see that A ratio B is equal to 16 ratio 27 and B ratio C is equal to 1 ratio 7. So now one thing uh, you can notice here, whenever one variable is repeating and their value is different, so that means we have to apply their N method. Alright, so we will write here A ratio B and under B you will write here B ratio C. Now put the value of A here, that is 16 ratio 27 and under 27 you will write here 1 ratio 7 now again you will put the arrows like this so now a ratio b ratio c will be there 16 into 1 that will be 16 1 into 27 will be 27 27 into 7 will be 189 so you will write here 189 now they are also asking us for finding a ratio c so what will be the value of a ratio c that will be 16 ratio 189 
right so it was very easy examples right regarding and method so now student we will talk about proportion so what is proportion a statement of equality of two ratios is called a proportion so whenever we are having a two ratios and there will be the equality between these two ratios then it will be called a proportion so now how can we represent this proportion so with this sign right so this is a sign of ratio and this is a sign of proportion so we will uh, speak like this a ratio b proportion c ratio d now there are some specific name for these a b c d so now a and d are called the extremes values and b and c are called the means value right now for them there is one formula that we are going to use for finding the solution for some uh, applications regarding proportions so it is product of means is equals to product of extremes i'm repeating it product of means is equals to product of extremes so this formula we are going to use for solving some examples so let's start with the first example so here we are having first example so let's read the statement check whether the following numbers are in proportion or not right so first of all we are given with some numbers like 6 comma 4 comma 8 comma 3 now we have to check that whether these numbers are in proportion or not right just now we have discussed about how to write them in proportion so we will write here 6 ratio 4 proportion 8 ratio 3 now this will be called the first number right this will be second one this will be third and this one will be fourth right now we know that these middle numbers are called the means and these numbers will be called the extreme these values are extremes values right now we are here to check whether these numbers are in proportion or not so here we will write proportion is possible if proportion is possible if product of means is equals to product of extremes that means the proportion proportion is only possible then if and only if the product of means is equals to product of extremes right now product of means means mean what these values 4 and 8 so you will write here product means multiply 4 multiply 8 now you will put here box why box because we are checking that whether they are in proportion or not so we will put a box here right so product of extremes so which are extremes values 6 and 3 so you will write here 6 multiply by 3 now 4 8s are 32 and 6 3s are 18 so now these values are not equal therefore proportion is not possible right so easy example so now move to the next example find the value of x where x ratio 4 proportion 6 ratio 8 is already given to you right here we need to find the value of x so now we will write them like this x ratio 4 proportion 6 ratio 8 now you know that this will this one will be the first second third and fourth right now these are called the means values and these are called the extremes values so you have to write like this only so here we have to find the value of x so we will write here product of means is equal to product of extremes so here we don't have any need to check here we have to find the value of x so we will just write here product of means is equal to product of extremes right so here i'm writing here second multiplied by third that means product of means and next one is product of means is equal extremes is equals to 1 into 4 uh, you can write it or you can skip this step right so product of means means what 4 into 6 product of extremes means x into 8 all right so now how you can do the first sum further like this 4 into 6 now this is the value that we want to find value of x all right so now that means 8 we don't need so we will shift this 8 now 8 is in multiplication multiply will change into divide so when you will shift this 8 to the this side so it will change into divide so now you can cut them 4 1s are 4 4 2s are 8 and 2 1s are 2 2 3s are 6 so now you are left with only 1 into 3 so the answer will be 3 3 is equals to x or you can write x is equals to 3 all right so students these were very easy examples so today we have discussed about the n method as well as the proportion and we have discussed two types of 
sums in the proportion whether we have to check the proportion is possible or not or we have to find the value of x in the given statement so students i hope now all of you are able to do the related homework that we have sent you in your snap homework but before starting your homework students please go through the youtube links because all these links are very helpful for you all to understand these type of questions in the better way thank you